Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, we are going to work on writing algebraic equations that are of addition and subtraction. First of all, let's review some vocab. Okay. Um, remember that as a mathematician, our job is to represent real life situations using expressions and equations. So we take a big story and then we simplify it down to just symbols and variables and things. Okay. And then notice the difference whenever I ask you to write an expression versus an equation. An expression um, is a mathematical sentence. Okay. But an equation is a mathematical sentence as well. There's only one slight difference. It has an equal sign. Okay. Um, equations are made up of two equal expressions. So essentially what you have is you have one expression on one side, one expression on the other side, and then an equal sign between them, and you want the right side to be equal to the left side. So as you can see throughout the first part of notes, we have this little like seesaw or teeter-totter drawn. And so think of it as like a scale, you want to have it balanced, okay? And if um, you add something to one side, all of a sudden it'll be unbalanced, right? So you want to make sure you do the same thing to both sides to bring it back to balance. All right. Um, first off, let's just do something really simple. Which one of these following are examples of equations? Is this an equation? Yes or no? Well, first of all, um, this is an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign. This could be an equation because it has an equal sign. But instead of just looking for an equal sign, you also need to make sure that it's actually a balanced equation where the left side equals the right side. So what's two plus three? Five. And then the right side is just five. So is the left equal to the right? Yes, then it is an equation. This is not an equation. This is just an expression. Okay, the side 16 minus six is 10. The left side can't be simplified anymore. 10 does equal 10. So yes, that is an equation. Um, this has an equal sign, but before you jump to put yes, What's one plus two? Three. Can the right side be simplified anymore? No. Is that a true statement? Does three equal nine? No, it does not. So that is actually not an equation. Yes, I know it has an equal sign, but just because it has an equal sign doesn't make it an equation. Okay. Um, now this one, you have three plus one, which is four. And then the right side, seven minus three, which is also four. So here, the left and right are balanced. They're equal to each other. So Yes, that one is an equation. Um, what's one half? If you were to type that into your calculator, you type one divided by two and you get 0.5, or hopefully you have that memorized. And is 0.5 equal to 0.5? Why, yes, it is. So that would be an equation as well. Okay, now algebraic equations are equations that have variables. Okay, and remember a variable can represent um any number okay so we use it to plug in to a number that we don't know sometimes they can represent more than one number in an equation we want the expression on both sides of the equal sign to be equal otherwise it's not an e equation look right here it even has the word equal kind of at the beginning okay so you want the left side to equal the right side all right let's look at some examples so this first one says min gets paid two dollars more per hour than kai how much does min get paid per hour so let's take a look at this little seesaw and why is it unbalanced well it's unbalanced because min gets more than kai so her side is heavier right so in our story min gets paid more than kai now, how can we make it so that Kai and Min's hourly pay are actually equal? Sometimes there's more than one way to get the answer. Okay. I could, um, if I'm referencing, like, what could I do to Kai's side? Would I add to his side or subtract from his side? If I subtracted from Kai, he's already getting less than Min's. So and now he's going to get even less of less than what she gets. So I wouldn't want to subtract from his side. I'd probably want to add to his side to get them in balance. 
How much do I want to add? What's the difference right now between them? Well, it says that Min gets paid two more than him. So they're separated by $2. So if we just add $2 to Kai's pay, then voila, Min and Kai are now balanced. Okay, now that's not the only way we could have done this because um, I could have just taken away from Min's pay and then they would have been balanced, right? how much would I have to take away from her in order to have them balance? Well, there's a difference of two. So I would take away two from her and then she'd shoot back up and they'd be balanced again. Okay, so I could subtract $2 from men's pay. But that would stink for poor men. So they'd probably add on to Kai's. But again, um, there's more than one way to get the equations to be balanced. Okay, so think of it as a teeter totter or scale that you want to get both sides equal to each other. All right. So right here, when you write an equation, you want both sides of the equation to be I hope you already know this word equal. So in example one, it said that men is paid two more per hour than Kai, if Kai makes 15 an hour, how much does men get paid? Write an algebraic equation for the story to help find how much men gets paid. Okay, so the plan is that we know um, men is so equal to two more than Kai's pay. So you take Kai's pay, add two to it, and then that's men's pay. Right? So that's the plan. Well, it told me that Kai got 15 an hour. So let's replace Kai with 15, add two, and then that's going to equal men who we don't know at this point in time. Okay. Um, because remember, they are having you write an equation to figure out what the variable is. And they're assuming you're not that big of a genius that you can't add this. Now we know what's 15 plus two. It's 17. So yes, congratulations. Men make $17 if um, Kai makes 15. But what the reason we want to do for the um, equation like this is that M and K could change because they're like, all right, well, what if Kai, he got a raise and then he makes $20 an hour now? Well, she's still going to make two more. So then she'd be at 22. Okay. What if a few years from now he's at $25? Well, since men started first, she's always going to be $2 ahead. So if he's at 25 plus two, she'd be at 27. So like variables can change of what you're plugging in. Um, so that's why we want to keep variables as variables sometimes. Okay. Um, so, and then also it's helpful if you have variables that make sense for what you're plugging them into. So I used M to represent Kai, uh, men's pay. And then if I didn't know what Kai's pay was, I would use a K to represent Kai. Okay. Now, as we said, there's usually more than one way to solve an equation. I think it's easy to just write it straight from the um, story right here where it was min is so equals two more than Kai. But some people um, may have said, OK, well, then that means if I take min's pay and I subtract two, then I'm going to get Kai's pay. And some people think of the story that way. OK, you're still fine, because, for instance, did we know min's pay at, from the story up here? No, we didn't. Okay. Um, and then we know to minus two equals, they did tell us what Kai's pay was. They told us that Kai makes 15 an hour. And so then what minus two is 15? 17, right? 17 minus two is 15. So you still would get the answer of 17, whether you set it up this way or this way. Um, in this instance, we use the variable of M and what is the variable representing? Well, M is representing men's pay. Okay. Um, the plan part is helpful sometimes if you're stuck when you're trying to write an equation from a story. Um, some people can just jump straight to the equation. But if you're stumped, think of it as a story and then start plugging things in. All right. And then don't forget to always define what your variable is standing in place for. All right. Let's try some more of these. So if we turn the page, 
we can see that there's another example. And this time um, it says, Don has 221 more dollars than Greg, okay? If Don has 682, then how much money does Greg have? Write an algebraic equation for the story to help find out how much money Greg has. Okay, and so you're like, wait a minute, it looks like it's balanced. Um, it's slightly unbalanced, but you can also see that this right here, Don has more than Greg, okay? Um, so from the story, it says Don has, so is or equals um, 221, 221 more than Greg. All right, so that's my plan. Now let's see what they actually told me. So usually there's like a period or something. And so this helps me write my equation. Then after that period, they're gonna tell me another piece of information. And then I'm gonna choose what to plug it in for. Well, it says if Don has $682, so where should I put it? I should put it here where Don is. So 682 equals, we don't know at this point in time, how much Greg has from the story. And then plus 221, I'm gonna bring down. Okay, and we can use that to figure out the question it's asking, then how much money does Greg have? Okay, um, now that we have this, you technically would um, not actually even write out his full name, right? The whole point of an equation is we wanna make things simple and not get rid of all those extra words. So what would I replace Greg with? Greg with will give him the variable of a G, okay? So there's my equation. Now, if they ask for an equation, that's it, you're done. If it asks you to solve it, sure, subtract 21 from both sides and you get 682 minus 221, you get 461. But is that what it's asking? No, it just said, please write an algebraic equation. Done, did it. 682 equals six plus 221. Um, now, is that the only way that I could have done it? No, you could have said, if I take Don's amount, and I subtract 221, then that would be equal to how much money Greg makes. And then, okay, they told me Don makes 682, so 682 minus 221 is gonna be equal to however much Greg makes. We don't know at this point in time from the story. I would have to use my equation I created in order to figure it out. Okay, and then when it says define your variable or what does the variable represent, well, I used a G and that's standing for amount of money Greg makes. Okay, if you haven't tried any yourself first, um, why don't you go ahead and try this next one? So pause the video, try it, and then unpause it and come back and check to see how you did. Okay, so you paused it, you tried it, now you're back with us. It says, Eli bought a book. The price of the book was $22. He had a $5 coupon and paid for the rest of the book in cash. So how much cash did Eli use to pay for the book? Okay, think of this as if you were actually at the store. Okay, you walk into the store and you have money, okay? And you are Eli. So you have however much cash you brought to the store. Okay, um, plus the coupon that I have is going to be equal to the amount of the book. All right, so he bought a book. The price of the book was $22. So the price of the book was 22. Let's replace that here. He had a coupon that was $5. And then um, the rest he paid for in cash with his cash that he brought. Do we know how much that is? Nope, that's what we wanna figure out. So you could use an E for Eli's cash or a C for his cash, whichever one you want. Um, okay, there you go. That is your algebraic equation. And then they want you to find your variable. So C equals Eli's cash. Now, is that the only equation? If you didn't set up that one, did you technically get it wrong? No, because you could have done, okay, if the price of the book was 22 bucks and he used a $5 coupon, then the rest of the money, whatever's left over, that's how much he had to pay in cash. 
And there you go. Yes, that would be an equation as well that would help you figure out how much she paid. All right. If you got either of those, congratulations. If not, why don't you go ahead and try this one again? Um, the next one, number four. So pause the video, try it, and then unpause it. Let's see how you did. Okay, it says Miguel went out for lunch. He ordered a cup of soup for $2.99 and a salad for $4.49. The total cost of his food, including the sales tax, was $7.76. How much was the sales tax? Write an algebraic equation for the story to find out how much Miguel paid in sales tax. So he went out to eat. He bought soup. What else did he buy? He bought salad. And unfortunately, in most places of the world, you don't have to pay for just what you buy. You also have to pay tax. Your parents will tell you all about it. All right. Um, and then you get to look and figure out what your total bill is going to be. Okay. Don't forget to include that tax. So if it told me this $2.99, what is that? That's representing the amount of the cost of the soup. So I'm going to plug that in for the soup, $2.99. Plus, I also bought the salad, and that was $4.49. Plus, the tax I have to pay, did they tell me how much the tax was? They did not. So we could use a T for tax, sure. I would avoid trying to use a T as a variable, um, unless maybe if you absolutely have to, please draw it with a tail like that. But maybe use an X or something else, because halfway through the problem, that's going to look like a plus sign to you, and you're going to forget all about it. Okay, um, in this case, I broke my own rule. I used a T, try to avoid it, or if you do, use a tail like that. Um, this represents the tax. And your soup plus your salad plus the tax equals your total bill. Did they tell me how much the total bill was? Yes, it was $7.76. Okay, so then you technically would take $7.76, subtract the $4.49, then subtract the $2.99, and that would tell you whatever's left over, that would be the tax and it was 28 cents in case you were curious. I mean, it's not gonna break the bank. Um, but at the same time, they didn't ask you for how much the tax was. They just asked for the equation. So that's all we're doing at this point in time. Later, we might ask, actually ask you to solve it. Okay, next one says, Monica was taking a trip to grandma's house. On Monday, she drove 47 miles. On Tuesday, she drove 64 miles. On Wednesday, she realized she left something behind. So she had to drive back a few miles to the store um, to pick up, you know, whatever it was that she forgot. Then she drove back to where she was before <laughs> um, spending the night in that hotel. So on Thursday, she drove 57 miles and then finally made it to grandma's. If grandma lives 132 miles away, how far out of the way did she drive on Wednesday? All right, let's break this down. <laughs> Okay, so it's a road trip, and however much we drove on Monday, so Monday's miles, plus um, however much she drove on Tuesday's miles, how far did she drive? Um, and then technically, like, that distance plus Thursday's distance is like the distance to grandma's house, but not really because I went out of my way on Wednesday. Like I had to backtrack a little and go out of um, my way and then go to the store, find whatever it was that Monica forgot, then come back to where she was. And then she spent the night in the hotel. Then she kept driving um, on Thursday. So I need to subtract that little Wednesday's fiasco where she had to like drive out of the way to go to the store then add the distance she did Thursday. And that's gonna equal the total distance to grandma's house. I know, tricky one, huh? If you got this, congratulations. Um, Monday's miles was what? She drove 47 miles. On Tuesday, she drove 64 miles. Now we don't know how far out of the way she drove on Wednesday, so let's do a W for Wednesday's miles. Um, but on Thursday, she drove another 57, okay? And then that's equal to the distance to grandma's house, okay? So if I technically were to add 47 plus 64 plus 57 and then take all that and subtract it from 132, I'd be able to figure out 
um, how many miles it was that she went out of the way. And your answer would be 36 miles in case you were curious. But again, they don't care about that. They just want you to write the equation. And then whatever variable you chose, it could have been a different letter, define it. So I'm saying that W, because that's the letter I chose, is representing um, the number of miles driven out of the way on Wednesday. Now yours might look a little different. Um, it could be 47 plus 64 plus 57, then minus whatever variable you chose equals 32, or the 132 could be on this side and all this could be on that side. Um, there's several different ways, of course, but one thing is it's really helpful to write out your plan first so that you're not just plugging random numbers in, like you know what it is they're standing for. And then if you want to like actually solve your equation, see if your answer is reasonable and makes sense. Okay, that's another good way to check. Um, but at the same time for right now, we're just practicing writing this equation to represent a real world scenario. And hopefully you guys did pretty well. This one was really hard. I don't know that we'd have one that hard. All right, my little mathematicians, you're on your way to mastering writing equations. Congratulations.